This right here is our tier list for the current meta breakdown of Pokemon Unite. This is where we are sitting at with this uh, with this Umbreon update. Umbreon is sitting right here at that A minus tier. It's very very balanced. It's it's strong. It's early days, um, but we've got our same suspects up here and our S plus, which is just a little too strong. So. Here you have it, I've broken it down by class, so whether a supporter or defender or whatnot, so you can skip through and see where your favorite Pokemon sitting at and my opinion on it. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to do a meta breakdown, a new tier list given that Umbreon has been updated. Now this is specifically for our solo queue, but I am going to mention with some Pokemon if it was competitive where they might sit. This is given our Umbreon release. So without further ado, let's jump straight into our supporters. Eldegoss, A plus tier. This Pokemon is incredible, has a great, a great win rate. Uh, it's just really, really strong Pokemon. I'm a big fan of Eldegoss. I wish I had jumped on the Eldegoss train sooner. This Pokemon is really, really strong. Uh, Blissey, honestly, I'm going to say is A plus as well. This Pokemon's healing is fantastic. Safeguard as well in this meta is pretty strong. Uh, you can use this in solo queue. The Unite move does a lot of work. I'm a big fan of Blissey. I'm a big fan of, of, of our supporters. Uh, Clefable. Now, solo queue sits in this A minus tier. She does the job incredibly well. If we were talking competitive, S plus, right? Clefable is really, really good. But I'm going to keep Clefable in that A minus tier. Does a great job, but honestly, I think I'm leaning more towards using an Eldegoss or a Blissey if my team is requiring a supporter in the solo queue. Hooper, again, similar with Clefable in competitive S+, does the job really, really well and does the job well. Big fan of Hooper. Mr. Mime. Now, Mr. Mime is... A little bit of a tricky Pokemon here. I think Mr. Mime has a really uh, high skill cap, so I'm going to put an A minus. Mime does the job really well. Um, we're talking barrier and confusion as the build. A strong supporter. I wouldn't even call Mime mid tier because it just does such a great job. Although it doesn't do healing, just changing the terrain of the map and the big burst damage from confusion and the stunning. It's just an overall a really strong. Hick. Comfey. Let's talk about Comfey. Now, it's been nerfed. Before it was too strong, I honestly think Comfey is a strong selection. Comfey is a great Pokemon, will consistently be banned throughout these tournaments. Um, just a really strong pick. I'm a fan of Comfey. I've jumped on the Comfey train this season, and I'm a big fan of it in solo queue. Now, Sableye and Wigglytuff here, they are supporters, but Sableye is on honestly a class of its own. Sableye is a A minus tier. Sableye does, does the job well. I'm yet to verse a Sableye that I'm really, really frustrated by and has like really changed the tide of the game. Um, however, it's a great pest. It 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 gets great vision. Um, and it does honestly it is is a good pick. Okay, it's 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 not mid, it's above mid. It's a great pick. So all of our supporters here, as you can see, they are just strong picks. Now, really tough. Wheelytuff is, in my opinion, the beginning of our tanks here. It doesn't do a lot of healing. Um, in fact, it does zero healing. Uh, it does a great job with, however, tanking and getting vision. I am going to put Wiggly in mid, though. I'm not a big fan. I think there are other Pokemon that can do the job well. However, um, I wouldn't say it's below mid. I think Wiggly is now in a spot in the meta where you can get some good value using that Sing and Dazzling Gleam. Blastoise. Blastoise is a tricky one. So we're on our defenders here. Blastoise is probably mid. Um, I'm going to keep it as mid. The Rapid Spin and Water Spout has dropped off a little bit. Um, you know, I think I'm kind of going to leave it a little bit comment-less at the time being. You know, it's not bad, but it's not that great. Uh, Gudra, honestly, Gudra is below mid. I'm not a huge fan of Gudra. Even though I've got a slight buff, I just think there are Pokemon that do a better job. So, um, I'm going to leave that as is there. Uh, Greedent, honestly, is an incredible pick as a tank. Can carry games as a solo. Do I think 
it's too strong, no, um, but I'm going to leave it as a strong selection. Greedent is amazing and a lot of fun and it requires skill. So that's where Greedent sits. Uh, Lapras is too strong. Lapras needs another nerf. Um, the fact that it, there's really no skill cap to this Pokemon, you can kind of just click buttons and roll with it. You can throw on that double band and get a lot of value. I think if the Pokemon required more skill, it wouldn't be as strong. But you can play Lapras pretty brain dead, so uh, it's just it's too strong. It needs enough. Um, but good news, if you're playing solo queue and you want to climb, jump on the Lapras train. You, you'll do pretty well. Um, Snorlax is kind of bad, very situational. Uh, Snorlax can do some good work in situations, but again, is just straight up kind of situational with the value that it can provide. Uh, Umbreon. Umbreon in the competitive sense, this is really exciting because it's it's pretty fresh Pokemon. Uh, Umbreon is honestly a minus tier. It's not very, very strong. It's not too strong, but it's definitely above a mid tier. I think a minus fits the bill really well with Umbreon. Again, these are early days. Uh, I've done a video on Umbreon, so you can have a look at that with the different builds and the explanation of how Umbreon functions as a Pokemon. I've had a lot of fun playing it, although I had to spend some gems on it, which I'm not too pleased about, but that's okay. That's all right. It was a lot of fun to play. Uh, Mamoswine. Honestly, honestly, Mamoswine's kind of bad. Mamoswine has some situations where it does well. It's got some matchups, but Late game, this Pokemon just does not do enough for me. It does not have enough self-sustain to be a good tank. Crustle is honestly kind of kind of the same. Okay, there are situations where Crustle does well, but generally across the board, at the moment, in this current meta with the backline mages, you just stand there and get pumped and you don't deliver any value other than vision for about four seconds, um, which Sableye will do for you and then confuse the enemy. So... No, not a, not a huge fan. Uh, Trevenant. Trevenant. I'm going to say mid. I'm going to say Trevenant's mid. Would I say Trevenant's mid? Mm. No, Trevenant does the job well. Trevenant is, Trevenant is Trevenant. It's been nerfed, but it's still pretty good. Slowbro. Slowbro is a plus. Strobro, Strobro. Slowbro does an awesome job. I'm a big fan of the bro. I love using him. I think the fact that his Unite move helps you take out two Pokemon if the enemy have got a Comfey, it's a really strong pick in the current meta. Uh, now onto our attackers. Cinderace. Mid. Probably below mid, actually. I'm not a huge fan of Cinderace. Um, Although Cinderace did get a buff, no, B tier. It's not below mid, it's mid. Uh, Cinderace is mid, um, but you need the team comp to make Cinderace work. So, And you also need the jungle. So solo queue, probably not the greatest Pokemon to be using. Uh, Dragapult, nice mobility. I'm probably going to say again in in the mid tier. Okay, uh, Dragapult does well. Dragapult's fairly strong, but again, if... You don't really know how to use the Pokemon. You're not going to get much value. Again, you do need that jungle to get up and going. Uh, Chandelure. Honestly? Honestly, probably A+. Chandelure is a strong pick. Great range. Uh, great ability to move locks and players. Uh, has a really strong Unite move. Does quite a lot of burst damage from a good distance. Um, it's probably a lot easier to support Chandelure. You can take this Pokemon to lane as well. Um, I'm a big fan. I am a big fan. Garchomp, what are you doing here? Uh, Cramorant. Cramorant is probably just a below mid pick right now. Um, although Cramorant can do some work, it's fairly decent in lane. It just has... It just drops off late game. The Unite move being static for too long at the moment in this meta, I just don't think it's a great idea. I think mobility is a really valuable thing right now. Um, so I'm going to say below mid. Uh, Ninetales is mid-tier. Although Ninetales did get a buff, and I've seen... Actually, not no. I think... No. The buff was too good. I actually think the buff has made Ninetales... The buff has made Ninetales a plus tier. Maybe a minus tier. Um, Just because. 
you can do a lot of damage. It wins the lane early. Yeah, yeah. Come to think of it, I haven't really... I want to play more of Nine Tails in this patch. Um, but yeah, I think A+. Plus. Really strong pick. Gardevoir. Gardevoir mid, mid tier. Um, kind of has been floating around here for a little bit. Probably needs a little bit of a buff. But yeah, probably mid there. Uh, Venusaur. I'm a fan of Venusaur, but I, I, and I'm a massive fan of Venusaur, especially Solar Beam, but I do think Venusaur sitting at a bit of a mid-tier right now, potentially even below mid-pick, unfortunately. Um, but be yeah, honestly, I'm going to put him in below mid-pick, which really hurts me because I love this Pokemon. I am a big, big fan of Venusaur, um, but unfortunately, that's where I think he's sitting. Now, Greninja. This is probably going to surprise a couple of you at the moment, but I think Greninja sits along this below mid-pick as an attacker. Let me explain why. The fact that you can't really use Smokescreen because when this Pokemon, Glaceon, uses Icicle Spear, it still follows you, so you, you die regardless. So, And Glaceon is as plus tier. It's just too strong. Um, but unfortunately... I just think that that really hurts you. You force use double team. Double team's definitely not my favorite skill. Um, Water Shuriken's probably the build, but yeah, there are just Pokemon that do that job better. So um, unfortunately, until Glaceon gets a little bit of a fixing there, I just think he's below mid. Ah, oh, Pikachu. Pikachu's below mid. Whatever Pikachu can do, someone else does it 10 times better. Um... Once Upon a Time was a really fun Pokemon to use. I do think, though, that the Bolt, Tackle, and Electro Ball is the set. Um, I just think that's where he sits. Sylveon. Sylveon's mid. Sylveon's mid. There's really not a whole lot more to say. Uh, it doesn't do the job well. Not all the time. Okay, not all the time. It's not as strong. It's not too strong. But I don't think it's below mid. I think Sylveon just sits as a nice B-tier Pokemon. When you see one on your team, you're happy that it's there, but you know, there are better options. Uh, Decidueye is in the correct hands in this A- minus tier. Decidueye does the job well. Um, now, I've had a little bit of discussion with some people in our wonderful community about the item build on Decidueye, and I've leaned towards taking that focus band off and putting that attack weight on, given that you are not going to throw for a stack. Now, I've made this adjustment, and honestly, I didn't really like it at first, but my win rate percent uh, told another story. It was above 60% fairly consistently um, you know, after about 20 to 30 games, so I thought there must be something being done right, although the damage felt the same at the end of the game. It was the big burst at a certain time that really made a difference. Um, so I think the Sidui, in terms of solo queue, although you do need the jungle, it does do the job really well. Now, Duraludon is a Pokemon I just really don't... I don't like Duraludon. Okay, so there's a lot of bias here. But Duraludon is a, is a strong pick. And this really pains me to say it, but Duraludon does the job well. It rips an objective. It can do a lot of damage if you learn how to position and use the Pokemon well. It's probably a Pokemon I need to pick up and play a lot more. Um, the Unite move is Zonal, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it's a Pokemon I probably should be mastering next, although I just, I really just don't like the Pokemon. Um, but yeah, strong pick, A+, plus, really, really good. Uh, it clearly does a lot of work. Um, when I'm playing with someone who knows how to use it, they do fantastic uh, a fantastic job. Espeon is S+. Plus. Espeon is incredible. I don't know why this Pokemon has such a low win percentage. It has in insanely good early game, insane secure late game, such a good ray fight. Like the fact that the Psybeam chains off the enemies, uh, it is such a great Pokemon. Espeon is up there as the best attacker. If no one claims Espeon and we need a bit of range attacking, I take this Pokemon into the lane and I love it. Especially paired with an EXP share holder, you funnel, you get that experience and you will just dominate the lane. If you are working alongside something like an Eldegoss or a Mr. Mime or a Clefable or a Slowbro, you are just going to have such a fun time in lane. A big, big fan of this Pokemon. 
Kind of wrapping up the attackers here, Delphox is a Pokemon. I just think, honestly, Delphox does the job well when you have got a Delphox that knows what they're doing. This Pokemon has a high skill cap. I'm a big fan of Delphox. Um, and I think Delphox does the job well. Definitely A minus tier. Um, Mew. Mew's one of these Pokemon where it's, it's really strong, and I'm going to put it as a strong pick. I really like Mew. Uh, I'm a fan of Mew. I think there's the, it's a really complex character to use, and I think that's where I'm going to settle with where Mew sits. Now let's get into our all-arounders. Sizzle. Sizzle is after the update... Honestly, before I would have put Scizor in like borderline unplayable. Like I, I like really, really not a fan of the Scizor. Uh, but Scizor, I think I'm gonna put in mid. I'm gonna put in mid. I, th I think it's good, but honestly, I'm, I'm yet to verse a Scizor where I'm like, wow, that really was very challenging. I had a very tough time taking on that Scizor. I just haven't experienced that, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave it at mid. But there might be some of you who go absolutely not a plus or a minus or whatever it is. Uh, Azumarill, borderline unplayable. And again, this is why I highlighted that video where Chris Hero's weight dominates. He took this Pokemon that's borderline unplayable and literally just destroyed the enemy. Um, I, I don't know how he does it, and I, I, I'm at the point where I just don't even use this Pokemon. I, I can't use it. I, I literally can't use it. The meta is so hard for these all-arounders right now. There's not going to be many up in this A tier whatsoever. Um, but speak on my next one, Buzzwell. Buzzwell is... Again, mid, can do well, doesn't do the job well. Doesn't finish off well enough, in my opinion. So that's where I'm going to leave Buzzwell. Uh, Dragonite is just <laughs> borderline unplayable. I should make another one. It is just an unplayable Pokemon. Not a big fan at all. Machamp is a tricky one. I think it's below mid. Ah, oh, it sucks because I really love these all-arounders, and I just think that's where my champ is sitting right now. It's just not, it's just not good enough. Um, Garchomp is mid. It's not below mid, but it just doesn't do the job well either. Um, now Urshifu. I'm going to assume we're talking about Water Urshifu here because the darker Urshifu is not cutting the mustard for me. Um, is it too strong? Only if you've got the correct support. You can't just take this Pokemon into Solo Queue. So given that said, I'm going to put that in A-, minus. but if we're talking competitive, it is very, very strong. Water Urshifu is, without support, not really a big problem for me. Uh, now our next one's Aegislash. Aegislash is in a really challenging spot in the meta right now. I'd say he's below mid. Um, it's not bad, but it's, it's not kind of bad, very situational. I think, like... I have success playing with Aegislash this season and last season, but I'm just not using it much. I'm only using it when the team comp is dead right. Uh, he's actually really good against this Eevee meta right now, just quietly. So, But yeah, below mid. Unfortunately, he needs a buff. Charizard. Charizard is honestly in that A- tier. I think Charizard does the job well. If you're looking for an all-arounder to kind of close the gap, so to speak. I think uh, Charizard's the one you're looking for. Tyranitar. Tyranitar's kind of bad, man. Um, and this is pretty painful for me because I really like Tyranitar. If you don't have a supporter, you cannot use Tyranitar. If you don't have a, a Comfey or an Eldegoss or a Blissey or a Clefable, like a Healer or even a, a Wish <laughs> a Wish Umbreon, um, it's just kind of bad. Okay. Very situational in, in the fact that if you're versing people who know how to kite you well, you are not going to have a good time with this Pokemon. So leaving Tyranitar, unfortunately, in the detail, which sucks because I actually really was jumping on board with the Tyranitar and having a lot of fun. Zacian is still too strong. Zacian needs another nerf. Zacian is really, really strong. It has the highest win percent by far, 55%, in fact, and is just honestly a bit too strong. Serena's borderline unplayable. Serena is unplayable. Lucario is unplayable. We we don't have fun playing Lucario. Something's got to shift with these all-arounders. They just suck. They just absolutely suck. Now, while we're on this unplayable, I'm going to throw an Absol there. You can't use these Pokemon. You need a full heal that lasts for like two seconds. Otherwise, you go in with your combo and you're just dead. 
You can't do anything. There's no escape when you go in. Um, which is why I'm going to talk about Zero Orc next. Zero Orc is A minus. Zero Orc does its job really, really well. Um, it can go in, it can get out, it can do a lot of damage. Uh, it has a very high skill cap. And the Pokemon is great in solo queue if you've got the team comp that, that allows you to take a Zero Orc into the lane or into the jungle. So I'm a big fan of that Pokemon. Zera Aura, not Zero Orc, Zero Aura is below mid. Zero Aura does not do enough work right now. Again, we're in this meta where everything's ranged, where everything is just a little bit too strong from range. And you can't go in with your melee Pokemon. So I'm not a big fan of Zera Aura. Dodrio. Dodrio is A plus, man. Uh, I hate saying it because I actually really... You know what? Oh. No, he's A plus. He's not too strong. I honestly think a slight nerf and he's in the correctly balanced spot. Dodrio is really strong. And it hate it pains me to say because I actually really don't like Dodrio. I, I can't get around the Dodrio. I, I I've tried and I'm not having a lot of success, but I'm seeing a lot of other people do really great things with Dodrio. Maybe I just need to practice more. You know, maybe I just need to limit test and learn when I can and can't initiate. Maybe I need to get a better internet connection. Who knows? Um, but whatever it is, I'm not that good with this Pokemon, so I really don't feel good enough to comment on it. But it's definitely a strong selection. Uh, Gengar's below mid. No, it's not. Gengar's kind of bad. Very situational. If you're up against a team comp that doesn't die to Gengar's combos, slash you're up against people who support you when Gengar initiates on you, you're not really going to have a great time with Gengar. So I'm, I'm going to leave it in kind of bad. Uh, Talonflame. Oh. Sunflame's kind of bad as well. It's kind of it's below middle bad. I'm just gonna put in kind of bad. I'm not a huge fan of Talonflame, and that's where I'm gonna wrap up. 